But what we're going to show here is that we can set up and play DMX and Pyro with just the FTQ module. And although we could control it with the FireTech controller, we're going to be able to load a script into the FTQ module and control it with just a small RF remote. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the controller off. And what I've got here is the FT control app running. It's got a audio file loaded into it. We're going to start up the FTQ module here. We're going to go ahead and select ID1. It's got no script loaded into it right now. We're going to go ahead and put it into USB mode here. And we're going to insert our drive here that's got the file for the show in it. We're going to go ahead and select that at ID1. And there's our script, DMX Pyro Musical Demo. You got 221 events. 24 of them are Pyro events. And the remaining are DMX. So we'll go ahead and remove this drive. And while it's restarting, I'm going to hold down the forward button to put it into master mode. So it's gone into master mode. And now I'm going to connect our Android device so we can play the audio. And I've got that hooked into this speaker here. Now one thing I wanted to show is I've got two RF remotes here. They're essentially the same. I don't know how you can see them in the dark here. Actually, let me go get a headlamp. Now what I wanted to show here is that this one here, it's not recognized because it's not learned. You see here as I push it, I get an X. Meaning that the module recognizes that a remote is sending a signal, but it's not learned. This remote here is learned. And I'll show you here as I press the, the D button, which I have programmed for alternate button 2, you'll see a 2 show up there. And it'll go into the channel status. What actually tells me what I have programmed for the pyro events. Before we plug in the rails here, I'm just going to test the DMX here real quick and test the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into ARM. And you can enable arming by the small remote too, but right now we're just going to arm it by the module. So we can see this has gone into ARM. Also, our FT control shows armed. Now I'm going to go ahead and start it with the remote here. We've got music, lights showing up. And I can pause it. And we can resume it too. All right, we'll go ahead and pause it and we'll put it back into test. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the rails here. And it's telling us no rail detected, no rail detected. So I'm going to plug in rail one here. And you see there, we've got solid boxes. That means we've got igniters on every programmed queue right now. And that's what we want to see. I'm going to plug in rail two here. And we see there, we've got one error. Now I did this deliberately just to show what it looks like. So we're going to go fix that real quick. So here we go here at this fountain station. You can see I've got this wire right here disconnected. So I'm going to reconnect that. We're going to go back here and now we see we've got solid boxes on all 24 cues, which is what we wanted for the script. Here we go, this is the DMX Pyro Musical. We've got six DMX flame machines, a couple of par lights. We've got 24 stage fountains. 
And we're gonna fire it with this small RF remote here from a safe distance. This just gives you another option to get started with the system. You can also use a small remote for some other features as well. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. And that's it, quick little demo there. Hope you enjoyed that, that was kind of fun. One benefit of adding DMX to your show is that you can do dry runs inside relatively safe with the DMX equipment. And here I have it set up with the FTQ module there on the table with the script loaded. I've controlled it just like I would in the field with the small remote. I've got the Android device connected and it's controlling the audio. So essentially able to do a full dry run inside. The rails provide a convenient means of setting up everything separately or ahead of time. And that's what I've done here with all of the stage fountains and was able to test continuity with the FTQ module ahead of time. And here I've only used 24 of the 64 cues DMX does require electrical power, so you got to run extension cords out into the field where you're going to set up the flame machines and the par lights. We intended to put a flame machine down every 10 feet. Now these flame machines are not high-end units. These are relatively inexpensive. You can find them online for as low as 25 bucks if you really do some digging. But for this demonstration, they give you an idea of what you can do with DMX. The programming is very similar to what you would do for higher end devices as well. These ones have two DMX channels uh, in the script uh, for a safety channel and a duration of the flame. And you can test it once you have the fuel inside. You can manually test these devices to make sure that they're working. Now these run off of a can of starting fluid, which is relatively inexpensive. You can find them for, you know, three bucks or less. There's a spring plate that you press down and then the nozzle or the draw straw of the can fits into a solenoid operated valve up above. Now, although these are fairly inexpensive DMX flame machines, with DMX, they're actually quite accurate. Now, I'm going to replay a portion of the show here and slow it down to one-tenth of the speed. And look how consistently they all fire. All right, now back to the setup. It's now time to plug in all of the DMX cables. Now you'll notice there, I've disconnected the extension cord to all the DMX devices to remove power as a safety precaution during setup. Now each DMX device has an address that's defined by those dip switches. And here I'm connecting all of the cables. These cables I picked up for about six bucks a piece. They're 15 feet long. And each DMX device has an input and an output. I also included some Par lights. These didn't show up real well because I had them faced in the wrong direction during the actual demo show, but that's okay. The fountains were all prepared ahead of time on boards and pre-wired to the rails. This allowed me to just set the rails down and plug in the cables. With the FireTech rails having an integrated splitter, I could just daisy chain the rails together 
for both the left front and the right front. In this setup here, there were three firing platforms going to the left, all chained together, and three going to the right, all chained together. This demo gives you an idea of the capabilities of the FireTech FTQ module. This was only a 50 second demo using only a small portion of the DMX capability and only 24 of the 64 cues of the module. Think of what you could do with a full module or even multiple modules. Check out more information online at firetechfiringsystems.com and check out the other videos on the FireTech YouTube channel.